All right, let's play through number nine. Nice warm sound, subdivide eighth notes within this so we can change together. Also, don't read it, just glance at the notes occasionally and change with me. You can watch and get used to seeing what the beat feels like. Here we are, beginning. Get some air through there. We have three and breathe and. that everyone who has F, either in the bass clef or the treble clef, play your first note. If your first note is concert F, play your first note. Okay, and. Just here, just, just the trumpets you have it, play with me. That's better, that's better. Um, who else, bassoons, can I hear all of you play your F? We have two. Okay, can we go one at a time real quick? Okay, good. Too high. Anything you can do to play it low would be great. It's a little under, so the opposite and okay, that, that's good. So with those adjustments in mind, can you play it together again? Here are your and. It's already much, much, much better. Who has the the um, treble clef? You guys and some clarinets. Let's just do saxophones and clarinets, then we'll get to the flute flat. Here's your uh, your F and. Concert C, concert C, can I hear that please? Concert C, and. Okay, good. Just the trumpets you have, concert C, just the trumpets. Okay, so remember, third valve's got to go out to make that in tune. So make sure it's pulled out sufficiently while you're playing. One more time. There's one who's real sharp. Can I go one at a time? Yeah, can you, can you get the third valve slide out further? Next. Okay, we skipped one. Okay, that's all maybe a little too far. Okay, that sounds about right. All of you together. We have an. No wind goes in, no sound comes out. So can we really put some air in there and do it again? There you go. Yeah, so remember, if you're going to shape it, that's, you'll never get a sound with that much air. Really, that's the amount of wind. One more time. There you go. All right, and finally, if you have a concert, uh, uh, concert A, can you play that note, please? Those of you have A. We have N. Nice and low. Whatever the trumpets you have, you have the toughest job. Yeah, you just have to think open because the second valve is very hard to adjust. Okay? Uh, let's hear the clarinets who have your B. Here's the B. <coughs> Not bad. Uh, and then we have what? A couple trombones? Now make sure you just go just like an extra tiny bit out because it's the major third. All right, let's play this one one more time with that in mind. Let's hear the whole first chord. Before we go on, play and sustain it. Warm sound, big warm sound, blended. Nobody should, nobody's sound should be heard. It should all sound like one big organ. Here we are, we have. Play straight through one more time before we start doing party tricks with this stuff. Here we go. We have, I'll do a little faster. We have three and four.
key that you're not going to see very much until you get into the orchestra, or perhaps chamber music. Uh, take a look at it. So look for all where all the sharps are. Right? F, C, G, D, and A sharp as well. I don't see A sharp all that much, but it is indeed in there. Play the first chord, everyone. Play the first chord. Let's see if we can find where this one goes. We have M, breathe. <laughs> Missing sharp, so check it again. Check it again. Bom, 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 bom are your notes. We have and breathe. Play a few bars of it and see if we, we can keep going in that in that vein. Here, our beginning. We have three and four. here that you change your notes at the correct time. All right. Um, let's, let's do triplets this week. Triplets, let's just start with plain old eighth note triplets. Da, 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 a little faster than we've been doing them in the past. It's time to have some magicians. Don't talk. This is important and I don't like to explain myself twice. Um, so straight eighth note triplets all the way through. Here we are. We have one and a two and a three and a four. The quality, the quality must be the same, both tonally and ensemble-wise. As then, so it was just basically there wasn't a good breath. There's not good breath support. Remember, H U T. H U T's got to be behind every attack. Can we be that? And please count and prepare during the prep bar. Don't have conversations and you know let your mind fritter off to unimportant things. This is important. Concentration. We have one and a two and a three and a four. <laughs> There's no reason not to in this. All right. Um, I'm going to slow that down. And the, every second eighth, in other words, the middle of the three, we're going to double it. Now, the, the idea here, and it'll be slower than that, um, will be that each note is completely divorced, separated from its neighbor. So it's never. It's never that. It's always. Now, you have to remember, like I always tell you, when you go to the fast notes, first of all, you got to have H U T prepared, and then you got to push the air through like a crescendo. When you need to breathe, you can breathe before the two notes. You should have enough time to get a nice small breath in. Can we try that? Let's do it slightly slower than that. If it is not together, if it is not clean, if I do not hear all of the notes from everybody together, I will stop. Here we go. We have one and a two and a three and a four and a four. It's, really good. It's, it's, oh, it's almost exactly what I want. 
What I do hear, though, is that the two, the double notes are softer. They're not as loud, which means the airstream is simply not strong enough to project them. In, in the real world, you'd have to play those slightly more than the notes around them, so, or that, so they get out to the other. In other words, like they were on the beat, almost. Okay? Can we do that? Otherwise, it was quite good. Quite good. Here we go. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, please count now. important thing is to first of all pay attention when I'm talking to you and look up once in a while because you don't and um, uh, to get HUT ready for those four well five really fast notes and get the airstream really prepared because without that you won't you won't get an even sound on all the notes and uh, you won't get the tongue to bounce the way you want it to here we go same scale and then we'll change. We have one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh <laughs> See how we can make this. Uh, um, the, I think the best thing to do uh, is to simply eliminate the one long note. That's the, the note on the beat. Actually, you know what we should do, since uh, this is a group four. Let's have the the group four instruments. That's the tubas and the bassoons. And if there's a third trombone, that would be third trombone. Are you, are you group four? Um, yeah. Is your first note A flat? Oh. Yeah. So if your first note is A flat in the bass clef, uh, play on the beat. Bump, bump, bump. Everybody else play. Can we do that slowly? In tw in twelve, in twelve. Just to just to set it up so you know how it works. Here we go. This is scale number eleven. With that in mind, you're going to just play. You're not going to play the note on the beat. You're just going to play the four sixteenth notes that come after it. This is everybody. Here we go. We have 10, 11, 12. It'll be bump. Okay, everyone 
know who's got what. Let's try it again. 10th, 11th, and. <laughs> except I'm going to beat it in four. It'll be the same tempo. And that means you have to internalize a lot of stuff. So not so much the people who have the beats, but everybody else. Uh, it requires a great deal of concentration to make this precise. So we need that preparation. We need the air. We need the short notes. We need the air to go through them. Here we go. We have three and a four and a... exponentially harder to do the faster it goes. That's just how it is. Give me a nice gentle waltz. Not not crazy fast, just enough that if, if one person decides to let his or her mind float off into the ether, it will all fall apart pretty fast. Here we go. We have three and a four and a... Where does the first of those four notes go? Um, it seems to be like any time after one is a good place to start. That's not correct. It's got to be calculated down to the 5,000th decimal point to be correct. So you're thinking, you got to think of, you got to feel the two that are missing. Here we go one more time. We have three and a four and a something novel and then the last one we don't do anything with because it has so many tie overs and things like that. Here we go. Think, count, calculate, subdivide. Very, very important. Look up once in a while. Might might do you some good. You never know. Here we go. One and a two and a three and a four and a it's, it's sort of like like any time after the ball is snapped you can go. No, you gotta be ready and be It's only one place that it's correct. Also, if you don't start in the right place, I don't know how the notes have the right length and, and are in tempo. So think, 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 and be prepared. Be prepared. Breathe, maybe. One and a two and a three and a four and a... <laughs> Baseline players not to fall victim to what happens with everybody else. You have to you have to be in the right place no matter how far off they get. Don't don't slow down. In other words. 
Do not slow down. Be right on top of the beat. Just watch me and put the sound, bang, right on my beat. If they slow down, they're going to have to run and catch up. That's all there is to it. We have one and the two and the three and the four and the... We don't need to belabor this, but my point that it gets harder the faster it goes is now becoming completely obvious. We will return to this pattern another time. For now, um, we need something a little trickier, uh, which we can all do in unison. Um, and with maybe with fewer notes, so you don't wear yourselves out physically, but we can wear you out mentally. I like that idea. Um, OK, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to duplets, so we can completely rewire your brain, brains. It'll be 16th notes. Uh, on beat one, you'll play the first and fourth 16th notes, uh, and the same thing on beat three. And on beat two and four, you'll play only the fourth 16th notes, so it'll be one e and da. So da, 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 di, da, da, di, da. Yeah, except you play it four times. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, you know, let me just play it so that it's it's clear. Now this all has to be based on, and I'm not going to make you do it, so you don't wear yourselves out. That has to be your thought process. Oh, sorry. Otherwise, that one pickup, those pickup notes will not be in the right place. Let's do it very slowly once I'll beat it in eight. So it'll be bup, 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 bup. So I'm giving you extra beats, and then, yeah, question? Three, 11, or what? Three and 11 still? Or is it yeah, still scale number 11. Scale 12 will only play straight through. We won't do any patterns with that. Thank you for asking. Here we go. We have three and four and. And two and. that exact tempo, except I beat four, which means I free your minds to fill in the blanks. Here we go. Use your minds for good and not evil. Here we are. We have three and four and. <laughs> So if you were watching, you noticed that you got the same subdivision as when I did it in eight. I, I, was, I was helping you cheat, uh, which is always good. So now we've got to do it quick. The hardest thing here is really. Is those pickup notes will be late if you just sort of randomly place them. Or try to, I'll play it just about before the beat. That's how most people do it. No, you must calculate. Here we go. Think, count, watch, breathe, and the same sound would be great. It's a very nice sound you make. Um, so don't let that sound go away just because you have to think more about the rhythm. One and two and three and four and. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty good, I have to be honest. 
but there's just enough hesitation about where does the second note go that it's softer because some people are trying to sneak in after everyone else does it or just not playing it or it's just not confident. You gotta play it like, um, you know, it's, it's uh, these kind of things, it's, I, I sort of call it like a musical swimsuit competition. You gotta just go out there and show them what you got. You, gotta, you can't be shy at all, it's not for that, okay? I know most of those don't exist anymore, but it's a metaphorical uh, example. All right, here we go, one more time. It's accent, those single notes, duh, 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 duh. that's how it would be in a, in a real dance anyway. Here we are, we have one and two and three and four and. <laughs> have a chorus which have a note on the beat afterwards, duh, duh, it's always precise. The ones that don't have the next note are much rarely, more rarely precise. Um, yet, the counting involved in placing it is exactly the same. Why is that? Nobody knows. Uh, but it's always true that if you have that isolated fourth, sixteenth note that doesn't have a, a, a main beat afterwards, it's very hard to get precise. But if it's duh, duh, then it's very easy. That's just a weird thing about music, but you should be aware of it so that when you have that in, in a piece of repertoire, you practice it by adding that extra note. So that, and then you find it's easy to play. And you, dup, 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 and then when you have dup, 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 for the rare occasions when something like that comes up, that's how you practice it. Okay, let's do the last one, number 12 in D minor. Which one we just play straight through? Here we go, number 12. We have three and. <laughs> confident about it. To stay in the sound, try to blend it just a tough key. We have three and four. <laughs> Norwegian dances. 